This is a uh, custom function uh, I just threw in there to generate a hash. All it does is uh, it uses SSL to uh, make a hash there. I'm calling uh, the MD5 function right here. And that accepts uh, unsigned char as input. And then uh, the length of the string. Um, and then uh, the number of bytes, I guess. Well, actually, no, that's not the number. That's a uh, place to store the bytes. It returns 16 bytes and they're stored into this uh, pointer which just points to this array over here. Um, whenever you refer to an array it decays to a pointer so you can just type in the name wherever it, a function requests a pointer you can put that in there anyway. Um, here's a loop here to convert this into hex because uh, these bytes aren't very friendly, they don't print well, so we turn them into hex digits. Now there's twice as many hex digits because um, there's two hex characters, like uh, 00 to FF, um, for each byte. So uh, it's base 16. So FF translates to 255 and each byte can hold 0 to 255. So we have 16 bytes, um, which expands to 32 hex characters, and then we make our hex string and return that, and that's all this function does. It just makes a big long string of hex characters. A, B, C, A, B, E, H, F, 1, uh, well, no H, but <laughs> um, D, F, B, like, four three five whatever uh, the next uh, function here is what happens when someone presses the check hash button um, we can skip that for now and just go to this one because it's pretty much the same this is what happens when someone generates the hash we've got a uh, pointer set aside here and then we assign it to what uh, comes out of this make hash function that gives us a, a handle that we can later free and uh, this hash is simply copied to the text box over there the uh, entry to um, so when you press the button it'll generate a hash basically and this just checks the hash against what's already there and then puts valid or fail into the label so it'll let us know if the password is good or bad. And then this just closes the program down when someone presses the escape key. We call GTK main quit, which cleans up everything and shuts the program down. Um, this is the main program right here. This is what happens when someone uh, runs the program. See, everything is driven by events here. All these things are events. Somebody clicks a button or activates a menu item or runs our program and um, we just uh, tell it what to do. These uh, this these def definitions up here this is the uh, GTK Builder widget um, that just uh, initializes GTK Builder. We've got uh, our app widgets right here we're invoking, uh, we're giving it the name app, and uh, we're reserving memory for it using the size of uh, this uh, app widgets deal. It's our struct, basically. We're just uh, initializing it for our program. Um, this starts up the GTK engine here, and this starts the builder engine, and the builder is a real handy deal that uh, reads our XML file and if there's an error we'll uh, handle that here and uh, yeah it just looks at the XML for the interface and builds our interface for us so we don't have to do that and that saves many pages of code um, this part here is uh, 
more definitions. I made a shortcut here to uh, basically assign the GTK widgets to the builder. And what that does is it activates these widgets and passes them to our functions. So I made that called apt-get. And these are the names of our widgets. And we're just passing them to our function so that when a uh, user clicks a button or whatever, it passes all these handles and we can use them in our function. Um, and this finishes connecting all the signals up. And this frees the memory or uh, gets rid of the builder because we don't need it anymore. And then we can show our window and go into the main loop here. And this just waits for key presses, button events, and whatever until the user gets bored and closes our program. And when that happens, this uh, memory is freed up and we return. So, and that's pretty much it. And we've compiled it and we can run it. There's our program. And we can generate a hash of our password. And there's our hex digits. We can check the password and it shows up as valid. Now if we went and um, corrupted our password, we can check it and it doesn't match. So we know that failed. Now this is a handy little deal. We can uh, we can use this to um, to make a really complicated password. I mean, imagine if this was your password. Nobody could possibly guess that, right? Well, actually, they could probably run a dictionary attack against the hash and uh, come up with it if they knew you were using a hash. So that's why we use passwords with numbers in them. You know, we could go like, hello, 49, uh, fish, and uh, generate a hash of that. Now it becomes really hard to guess that. And if you use that as your password, then you're, uh, you're, you're approaching um, better security, I would say. Of course, we're using MD5, and it has some collision problems. They're recommending SHA-1 now. That's another topic. I don't care for a little deal like this, though. And in most cases, MD5 is just fine, I would say. So that's our password hasher, and that's what hashes do. And we can click on our link here, see what happens. Maybe it'll load a browser someday. I don't know. I have to get that working yet. That part works. And the quit button works. So I'd say we're making some progress. Thanks for watching.